Today we'll be taking a look at running Postgres in a container. We'll learn how to mount a volume to persist our data, set up networking so we can access our database server, basic configuration and environment variables. Later in the series we'll turn on primary to standby replication and even run it in Kubernetes. Welcome to a brand new series of Postgres. With this video, we'll be kicking off a five part mini series on running Postgres in containers. If you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell to turn on notifications so that you're notified when part two, three, four, and five comes out. Running databases, especially in container environments can become really complex and advanced. So we're going to keep this video short and sweet and packed with information. So without further ado, let's go. So if you take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a storage folder and in the storage folder, I have a databases folder where I have all my guides on databases. We start off with Postgres and in here we've got all the files related to part one, the introduction to Postgres. And if we open up this folder, we have a readme and this is our introduction to Postgres with all the steps we're going to be following today. Now today's video is going to seem simple and way too easy and that's because it's meant to be. We're laying the foundation of what's to come. Running Postgres is easy, but the configuration has a lot of advanced depth and replication can also get highly advanced. And we'll need to learn all of that before we can even dream of running this in Kubernetes. So be sure to check out the link down below to the source code so you can follow along. So part one is our introduction to Postgres and its primary focus is running Postgres in a container locally with the bare minimum settings. So our guide kicks off by going directly to the Docker Hub page. The Postgres official image is on Docker Hub with some quick references, supported tags for the different versions and operating system combinations you can run. It talks about what Postgres is, how to use the image with a bunch of examples on how to configure the image and a lot of stuff we'll be covering in the series. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at how to start a simple Postgres container. So we'll use Docker and Docker Compose. If we take a look at the first command here, it's a Docker run command. And if we scroll down, there's an example on a Docker Compose as well. Now taking a look at the first command, it's a simple Docker run command. So we say Docker run, and we're gonna give the container a name. And this is very important because later on, we'll start running more instances of Postgres and and we'll name them all differently. And we'll also take a look at the bare minimum settings. Now the bare minimum settings you need to get started is just the Postgres password. This is the password for the Postgres database administrative account. So we we'll use this account to create our tables and maybe to set up other users and user accounts for applications. Then we say minus D to run in background mode and we call the image that we wanna run. In this case, it's gonna be Postgres. So if we copy this command and we paste to the terminal, this will kick off a Postgres instance in the background. And if I do Docker PS, we can see our Postgres instance is running and it's exposing port 5432. And in this case, its name is just called some Postgres. So this is the bare minimum command you need just to run Postgres for testing purpose. Now in the series, we're going to be extending this and create a lot more complex and advanced Postgres instance. So we'll learn everything bit by bit. Another method of running Docker containers is with Docker Compose. So here we have an example of a Docker Compose file. So we can go ahead and copy this content. And if you take a look at my GitHub repo in the storage database Postgres introduction folder, I have created a Docker Compose file. And if you take a look at that file, we've basically pasted the content that we got from Docker Hub. And here is also the most basic instance that you can run. So what I've done is here is created a service called DB for database. 
the image I want to run just Postgres, the latest version of Postgres. I say restart always, and then I give it an environment variable, which is just a Postgres password. That is the minimum configuration you need in order to start an instance. Now to delete my Docker container, I can just say Docker RM minus F and delete that Postgres instance. And to start up our Docker Compose instance, all I need to do is follow the instructions in our readme guide. So I change directory to storage database Postgres to the introduction folder. And if I do LS in that folder, you can see I have my Docker Compose file. And all I need to do now is say Docker Compose pose up and this will start up the container and we'll be able to see the log straight away. This example docker compose file also comes with a program called adminer. So this is like sort of an admin utility you can use to test your database and it's like a, a web portal GUI. So it exposes port 8080. So we can go to localhost 8080 and access this console and then we can select Postgres. We can select our server. Our server is DB because that is the name in the compose file that we have there and then we have our username which is postgres our password is the password that we have here it's just example so i paste that password and the database is just called postgres so if we click login we now have access to our database now when running applications in containers it's very important to know that whenever the container is stopped and removed all the data inside of that container is lost and this is a challenge with databases because it means if the container stops or is moved to another other machine, the data is gone with it. This is why in Docker we have this thing called a volume and we have to create a volume and mount it to the container. The container is not aware that the volume exists, it simply writes its data to files. So when you're running containers in orchestrators, it becomes a challenge to make sure your volumes are always available. Also in the next step, we'll learn where Postgres stores its data. So to exit out of this Docker Compose, I'm just going to say Control C and that'll go ahead and gracefully stop my database and adminer as well because the next step is more important when the container dies we don't want to lose our data so we need to find out where postgres stores its data now if we look at the readme of postgres we'll learn that postgres stores its data by default under a folder called var lib postgres sql slash data so there's two changes i'm going to want to make the first change is i'm going to want to create a docker volume that mounts a folder from our host into the container on var lib postgres sql slash data so whenever the container is writing here the data will also be visible on our machine so if we kill the container we can start it up again without losing the files that's the first change the second change is we're also going to want to run a specific version of Postgres. If we go back to Docker Hub and we look at the Docker run command we use, it's just running Postgres. This means it will run the latest version and we don't want that because in production the version of Postgres can change. So you always want to make sure you pin the version you want. So you can look at the supported tags here. They have different operating system and Postgres combinations. So in this demo I'm just going to pin the version 15. So I'm going to say I want to run Postgres 15. So so other than that, our Docker run looks very similar. I've changed the password from example to admin123. You can add a more complex password. I've given the name Postgres to my container and I'm mounting in my working directory. This is the directory we are in at the moment. So in the introduction folder, I am mounting that and we will create a PG data, which stands for Postgres data. You can call that folder anything you like. We're going to create that folder on the left here in our introduction folder docker will automatically create that because that's the volume instruction we're giving and then we're asking docker to mount it inside var lib postgres sql slash data i'm going to copy this command and i'm going to paste it to the terminal and when i press enter we now have postgres starting up have a look at that it's running interactively because i said docker run minus it instead of minus d if you want to run this on a virtual machine and server you want to run it in background mode so you want to say minus d so now you can see the database system is ready to accept connections and the reason why I'm running it as IT instead of background mode is so that we can see the logs here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another terminal so I'm going to leave this running here open up another terminal and we can go inside of the container and take a look so to go inside the container we run docker exec because we want to execute a command in the container we want to execute interactively and we want to execute into our postgres container so that's the name 
name of the container and we just want to run bash so copy paste that to the terminal and now we're inside to log into postgres postgres has a utility a command line utility called psql so we'll be running psql minus h which stands for host and the host name is simply localhost because we're already inside the container so we can use localhost to connect and the user we want to use is postgres so i'm going to go ahead and copy that paste that to the terminal and now we are in postgres now to interact with postgres let's create a table so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say create table customers and here i'm going to pass the fields i want in this table so the first name of my customer is just a text field the last name is also a text field and the customer id which is just a serial number so i'm going to go ahead and copy this paste it to the terminal and that'll create a table now notice that postgres did not ask me to sign in with a password this is because there is a way to configure postgres to accept connections from different ip addresses and allow certain connections from different ip addresses it has a trust configuration so by default if you are inside of the instance and you connect using that user it will not prompt you for a password unless we configure it otherwise in the next video we'll take a look at configuration so now we have our table let's add a record so I'm going to say insert into customers first name last name I'm going to insert a customer called Bob Smith so I go ahead and run that and that has inserted a record I can say slash DT to view my table we can see we have our customers table and I can get records by typing select star from customers and we can see our Bob Smith is there I don't need to do anything else I can just say slash Q and quit out of Postgres so now we have Postgres running in a container we have our table with with a row and we have technically set up persistence so what I'm going to do is just exit out of this container I'm going to do docker ps we can see our container is running let's go ahead and delete our container by saying docker rm minus f postgres I run that and then I say docker ps and look it's gone to see if our persistence has worked you can see on the left here is the pg data folder and it has all the files for postgres inside this is basically the data directory of postgres and it's persisted to our disk on the left here now what I can do is rerun my postgres instance and now our postgres is back up and running and it's initializing again and we can see it's now ready to accept connections so let's go back to another terminal and the moment of truth if we go inside of that container we go ahead and sign in as the postgres user and now the moment of truth we say minus dt and there we go we have our customer table i can query that table just to make sure our row is still there and we can see bob smith is there so our persistence worked now we can also configure postgres to listen on a network port and we can use the docker minus p flag to bind a port on our machine to access the postgres port now by default postgres uses port 5432 and by using the minus p flag in our docker run command we can bind different ports to different postgres instances if they're running on the same machine so here i've wrote down the default port of postgres which is 5432 and with docker's minus p flag we can do a bunch of cool things like for example we can bind port 5000 on the host to the container port 5432 so if we're running multiple instances of postgres in a postgres cluster on the same machine we can run one instance as 5000 the next instance as 5001 the following instance is 5002 and so forth without having to change the underlying postgres port that's just a neat trick we can do with docker run we can also change the port that postgres runs on and to do this we need to take a look at the configuration now postgres can be configured using environment variables and configuration files now this is where things get really tricky and highly advanced because postgres has a ton of configuration options and it is very very easy to drown in the documentation for configurations we'll leave that for part two so be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you get notified when that one comes out so now we've set up persistence in our docker run command let's go ahead and update our docker compose file so our compose file is still very straightforward we're not exposing any ports for our database and we don't have 
Docker assistance. So if we take a look at my readme, I've documented what the Docker Compose file should look like. So a few changes that we've made. Firstly, we pin the version of Postgres to Postgres 15. We've changed our environment variable for the password to admin 123. And this time I've configured a port. So I'm exposing port 5000 on my host and binding it to port 5432 inside of the container. And then I'm also defining a volume. So I'm saying that I want the folder PG data, which is my volume on the left hand side over here. And I want to mount it to varlib postgres SQL slash data. This means I can go Docker compose up. And now I have my database starting up from the volume on my local machine. I can now go back to adminer on localhost 8080 and sign in. And we can see we have our customer table over here. So our data has persisted and we have our postgres instance running in Docker compose. Now that is the simple basics of running Postgres in a container on Docker and Docker Compose, and also the basics of persisting data. Now in the next video, we'll be taking a look at the configuration of Postgres and go into slightly more depth and look at how Postgres is configured. Now our ultimate goal in this series is to set up streaming replication and eventually run all of that in a Kubernetes cluster. We'll learn the pitfalls of running database on container orchestrators and the challenges involved and there is still so much more to learn so if you like the video be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell and also remember to check out the community link down below and if you want to support the channel even further be sure to check the patreon link down below or click the join button to become a youtube member now that's it for this chapter and as always thanks for watching and until next time Peace.